number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played only once. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a telephone conversation between a client who wants to rent short-term accommodation and a rental agent. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Ace Accommodation. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to organise some short stay accommodation on the Gold Coast, please. Certainly. Who am I speaking to? Miss McKinley. Sylvia McKinley. Could you spell your family name for me, please? It's M A C K I N L A Y. The client's family name is McKinley, so McKinley has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one. To five. Good morning, Ace Accommodation. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to organise some short stay accommodation on the Gold Coast, please. Certainly. Who am I speaking to? Miss McKinley, Sylvia McKinley. Could you spell your family name for me, please? It's M A C K I N L A Y. Thank you. And your first name is Sylvia. Yes. Is that with an I or a Y? A Y, the old-fashioned way. That's S Y L V I A. Thank you, Miss McKinley. Now, just for our records, can you tell me what country you live in? Of course, it's England, actually. I thought so. Now, when are you coming? Well. At the moment, we're planning on arriving on July the twenty-sixth. Oh, the twenty-fifth. That's the last day of the public holiday, and it might be difficult to find something available on that date. No, we're coming on the twenty-sixth of July. Oh, well, that's fine then. We'll have lots of good places vacant by then. Although you wouldn't be able to move in until late afternoon. Because our cleaning crew will need time to get everything ready for you. That suits us. Our flight won't get in until early evening anyway. How many of you will there be? Just my sister and myself. And how long do you intend to stay? Oh, only a couple of weeks. We'd like to stay longer, but we'll have to get back to work. So you're not coming on business then? No, it's just a holiday. Why? What difference does that make? Oh, you'd be surprised. Business people have different needs. You know, wireless internet, even fax machines and photocopiers. No, we won't need any of that stuff. We'll be coming to relax and get away from all that kind of thing. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Good. Now, what exactly are you looking for? A house, a duplex, or an apartment? What's a duplex? Oh, that's what you might call a townhouse or a unit. You know, two houses semi-detached on the same property. Oh, I see. 
I think an apartment will suit us just fine. And how many bedrooms? Two. One or two. It depends on the size. My sister and I don't mind sharing if it's a decent-sized bedroom with two beds. Well, that makes it easier. And car parking? Will you require a lock-up garage? They're a little harder to find with an apartment. We'll have a hire car, and as far as I know, there are no regulations concerning car parking. I think as long as it's not parked on the street and it's secure, there shouldn't be any problems. Okay. Now, I'm assuming you want something by the beach. Yes, that's the idea. We want to enjoy the surf, sand, and sunshine. Okay, but before we settle on an area and discuss your price range, I'll need to know about other necessities. What do you mean? Well, for example, do you want to be close to a shopping mall or the casino or the fun parks, or do you want to be in a complex with or near a swimming pool? No, none of that really matters to us. But we'd like to have reasonable access to the motorway so that we can drive up to Brisbane to visit friends there. Well, there are quite a few lovely small towns to choose from. There's Main Beach, which is north of Surfers Paradise, or Mermaid Waters, which is a bit further south, or Palm Beach, which is quite a bit further south. Mermaid Waters sounds delightful. Is it close to the motorway? Well, not really. The M1 is actually closest to Palm Beach, and prices are likely to be more reasonable there too. That's settled then. Palm Beach, it is. Now, if you'll just give me your email address, I can send you information about the town and lots of photos. Well, my email is s m. ac13 at hotmail dot com. And one final thing: How much are you looking to spend per week on accommodation? Do you want something at the luxury end of the market? You know, newly redecorated, great views, all the mod cons. Not necessarily. Could we get something clean, comfortable, and reasonable for twelve hundred dollars a week? Could you stretch that to fifteen hundred a week? I've got a property in mind that you'll absolutely love, but you'd have to go to fifteen hundred. Twelve hundred wouldn't cover it. All right then, but that's our top limit. Good. I'll get on to this straight away, and there should be something in your inbox shortly. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a telephone conversation between a male insurance agent and a female client who wants to make changes to her policy. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Tauber Insurance Company. How can I help you? Good morning. I want to alter my insurance policy. Is that for your house, contents, or vehicle? My vehicle. The woman wants to change the insurance policy on her vehicle, so vehicle has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, Tauber Insurance Company. How can I help you? Good morning. I want to alter my insurance policy. Is that for your house, 
Contents or vehicle? My vehicle. Can you give me the number of the policy, please? Certainly. I have it here in front of me. It's ZQW5009. And what make and model of car is it? It's a Mazda. A Mazda Marvel. And what's the CC rating? Sorry, what do you mean? How big is the engine? Is it 1,500 or 1,800 cc, for example? Oh, that. It's actually much bigger than that. It's 2,500 cc. Thank you. Now, I just have to ask you a few questions to verify your identity. What name is the policy under? Heathcote. Let me just bring that up on the computer. Yes, can I just confirm your first name, please? Well, my first name is Lisa, but I'm known by my middle name, Marie. Right. I see both here, but Lisa is the one I want for ID purposes. And your date of birth, Lisa? I mean, Marie. The 22nd of August, 1955. Correct. Just one more question before we get started. Can you remember the password on this policy? Oh dear, I didn't know I had a password on it. Everyone has a password. Would you like to take a guess? Possibly it's my mother's name. And what would that be? Sophia. Sorry, guess again. All right. Oh, I remember now. It's my grandfather's name, Jack. Yes, followed by some numbers. 1897, right? Correct. Now we can get down to business. What exactly do you want to change? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, I think it's overvalued at the moment. Can we reduce the value by $5,000? You mean bring it down to $15,000? Yes, I'm sure it's lost quite a bit of value over the past year. Done. Now, what's the other thing? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, I want to add the name of another driver to my insurance policy. Who is it? His name is Samuel Michaels. He doesn't have the same family name as you. No, he doesn't. Is that a problem? No, it shouldn't be, as long as he's over the age of 25. But we find it easier to get approval for family members. Oh, he is family. He's married to my daughter. He's my son-in-law. And he's 28, in fact. Good. And what would he be using the car for? Would it be business or social purposes? Not really. You see, I've injured my right arm and I'm having difficulty driving. It's not an automatic. I have to use the gear stick. And Sam, that is Samuel, offered to drive me to my appointments and so on. He's a good driver and I feel safe with him but I'd like to know that the car is still insured with him behind the wheel. So that would be family reasons, then? Yes, I think so. Will my premium go up? No, as long as you can provide us with a photocopy of his driver's licence. A true copy. You know what I mean. You'll have to get someone from the Department of Transport to sign it, saying that he's seen the original document. I think we can manage that without any difficulty. Oh, and while he's at the department, he should ask them for a record of any driving offences, demerit points, that kind of thing. Only for the last five years, though. We're not interested in anything beyond that, but it's important that he has a clean record for the five previous years. Oh, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Is there anything else you need? Just the date for when you'd like this to take effect. Today, if that's possible. Yes. We can issue temporary cover from today's date.
but full cover won't apply until we've received the paperwork and it's been approved. What exactly is temporary? He'll be covered for two full weeks, but it will lapse after that time if there's any problem with his credentials. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between Thomas and Nadia, who are waiting at the airport. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Where have you been, Nadia? Browsing in the bookshop. What took you so long? You said you were only going to be away five minutes. I was only gone for a quarter of an hour. Nadia said she was away for a quarter of an hour. So the correct answer is B, 15 minutes. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Where have you been, Nadia? Browsing in the bookshop. What took you so long? You said you were only going to be away five minutes. I was only gone for a quarter of an hour. Well, it seemed much longer than that. Did you buy anything? I was tempted to get the latest novel by Dan Brown, but it's quite heavy and I'd have to carry it around with me. If I could have found a crossword puzzle book, I'd have bought it. But in the end, I was attracted to a front page article in today's issue of the New York Times. Is that all you bought then? Yes. Look. Why don't you read the business section while I catch up on the news, and then we can swap? I'd rather have the entertainment section. Are you looking for anything in particular? I just thought they might have a review in there of that new play that opened on Broadway yesterday. The drama about the awfully cruel pirate? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Hmm, I wonder how good it is. Actually, I was thinking of the new comedy. The one about the physician. Dr Hunter. That's the one. Well, when I was in the bookshop, I overheard a couple talking about it, and they said it was fantastic, not in the least bit boring. They especially liked the actor who played the main part. Very smooth, apparently. Lots of fun, then. Well, according to those two, they thought it was hilarious. Ooh, we'll have to make a point of seeing it when we get back. Definitely. We didn't have time for breakfast and I'm hungry. Do you fancy a coffee and a muffin? Sounds like a good idea. And how will you have your coffee today? Long and black as usual. I think I might have something different this morning. What? You don't mean a flat white or some other milky one? Oh, I don't know. I want something to perk me up. An espresso, short and black with sugar. Perfect. Will that be with a chocolate muffin or a berry muffin? I'll try to stay off chocolate. The berry sounds healthier. And I'll have a plain one with butter. Won't be long. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Here you are. Mind the coffee. It's really hot. Thank you. I'm really ready for this. Have you thought about what we should see when we get to London? The tower, of course. I've always wanted to get a look at the crown jewels. That is where they keep the jewels, isn't it? I think so. And what about the wheel? I hear it's quite extraordinary. I'm not that keen on the wheel. Do you want to ride on it? No way. Well, let's leave it out of the itinerary then. Okay. So, do we do the tower first? Yes, that's the idea. And then we absolutely have to go to Westminster. Really? Yes. Look, it's not going to cost us anything, and I promised my sister I'd take photos there. Well, if you insist. I do. Oh, did you know the British Museum is free to the public? Not just residents, but tourists as well. Well, I did know that, but I was hoping we wouldn't have to spend time in any museums. We've only got three days in all, and it'll take at least one whole day to go through the museum. Well, let's say we leave it till day three and see how you feel then. Okay, I can't argue with that. And Buckingham Palace? I suppose you've promised lots of photos of that as well, have you? Well, no, not really. But we can't say we've been to London and haven't seen the Queen's Palace. I guess not. And there's the added benefit that it won't cost anything as well. Oh, Thomas, it's not that I'm afraid of spending money. It's just that I want to see all the traditional sites first. Good. I'm glad that's sorted. Listen, I think they just called our flight. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a commercial property letting agent and a businessman who wants to move his business to new premises. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion, only the conversation relating to this will be played first. Ah, good morning, Mr. Rich, isn't it? That's right, Raymond Rich of ICT Industries. ICT Industries. Just a moment, while I put that on the form. Mr. Rich said that the name of his company. Was ICT Industries, so ICT Industries is written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Ah, good morning, Mr. Rich, isn't it? That's right, Raymond Rich of ICT Industries. I C T Industries. Just a moment while I put that on the form. Now you're looking for new office space, is that right? Yes. Our present lease is due to expire soon, and as the company is expanding anyway, we need to find somewhere to move to. Do you prefer the suburbs, the city, or a commercial zone on the outskirts? Well. 
currently we're in a very pleasant suburb, but as I said, we've outgrown that building as we've got to move anyway. I think the city centre is where we want to be, right in the heart of things. I see. Anywhere in particular? Yes, somewhere in the vicinity of the main transport centre, because I have a large staff, and car parking in the city is terribly expensive. I think it would be a good idea if we didn't use our cars at all. Exactly what size premises are you looking for? Good question. Something more than the 10,000 square metres we have at present should do it. Shall we say 12,000 square metres? That's probably about right. Yes, I think that would meet our needs. Just how many employees do you have to accommodate? Forty in all, but only fourteen will have their own offices. The rest will be in open-plan shared offices. Oh, I forgot to ask. Do any of your employees have extra requirements? Will we need to consider people with disabilities? Yes. Actually, there is one in a wheelchair who'll need suitable access and another who can walk just a few paces. She uses a mobility scooter, so we'd need to make sure all facilities, especially toilet facilities, were suitable and accessible, and we'd also need to be either on the ground floor or to find a secure place by the lifts for Mrs Jackson to park her scooter. I'll need to keep that in mind when I come up with the property for you to look at. Now, when are you thinking of moving? Well... Our current lease expires in August, so we'd like to have the move completed by then, of course. Well, there is a very suitable property that I have in mind here in the city, but the owners want a lease signed by the end of this month, May. Oh, too early, I'm afraid. I'd be ready to sign up by the end of June, though. Shall we say signed up by the 1st of July and moved by the end of that month? Definitely. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Well, I'll keep your requirements in mind and let you know when something comes up. Wait a minute. There is a vacant office space on the 10th floor of this very building. Would you care to take a look? It has only just become available, but I haven't started marketing it yet because it's in need of a bit of a makeover. The floor area is about the right size. Good. Let's see it then. Well, what do you think? Elevator access is great, and the lobby area is roomy enough for that disability vehicle you were telling me about. Oh, I don't know. There are too many small offices. Would we be able to take out a few of these walls and make bigger work areas? I don't see why not. Most of them are just partitions. Obviously, load-bearing walls can't be touched, but there aren't many of those to worry about. What about kitchen and dining facilities? We like our staff to feel comfortable eating at work. If they go out for lunch, it often leads to extended lunch hours and lost time. Come this way. This is the kitchen. Ooh, it's a bit pokey. We'd need to enlarge it somehow. What's behind the wall here? There's just a storeroom. You could take out that wall and expand into that space. Then what would we do for a storeroom? Ah, well, see that tiny office near the entrance? It has no external windows or natural light. It would make an ideal storeroom. Yes, you're right. The whole place is a bit dilapidated obviously in need of that redecoration you were talking about. And I don't just mean a coat of new paint. I think all the light fittings would have to be modernised. Those broken blinds have to be replaced, and this old blue carpet definitely has to go. I agree. That's something we can negotiate with the owner. 
but overall, do you think it would fit your requirements? Well, you haven't given me any indication of what the lease would cost. But before we get into that, what are the terms of the lease concerning length of tenancy? Well, generally in the city, leases are never less than three years. Oh? I mean, we don't mind signing up for that period of time initially, but we don't necessarily want to have to move after that. We've been in our last place for ten years, you know. Well, the usual agreement is a three by three by two. That's a contract for three years with entitlement to extension for three years and then another two years after that. But let me speak to the owner first. Hmm. And one more thing. We have to consider the time frame. Remember, my current lease is due to expire in August. Well, with reliable contractors, it shouldn't take more than a couple of months to do the necessary refit. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.